Good morning, Excellencies, Ministers, uh, Minister Sri Mulyani, senior officials from various countries, private sector representatives, uh, ADB senior management and board members, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ramesh Subramanyam. I am the Director General of the Asian Development Bank's Southeast Asia Department. It's my great pleasure to warmly welcome all of you to ADB's very first Southeast Asia Development Symposium. We had originally planned this symposium to take place this past March in Jakarta before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. But we are very happy that we can still gather today, even if virtually, to discuss and reflect on the challenges that are currently facing the region. We have an exciting lineup of speakers and panels today, and we hope that you will enjoy the day's events and find them useful. Let me first quickly share a few words about ADB President Masatsugu Asakawa, who will deliver the opening keynote speech shortly. President Masa is also the chairperson of ADB's board of directors, uh, and prior to assuming office at ADB on 17th of January earlier this year, President Masa served as special advisor to Japan's prime minister and minister of finance, and has uh, close to four decades of experience at the Ministry of Finance, uh, as well as international institutions with diverse professional experience that cuts across both domestic and international fronts. In the immediate aftermath of the global financial crisis, then in the Japanese Prime Minister's office, Mr. Asakawa was instrumental in orchestrating a globally coordinated financial package to abate the financial crisis including a $100 billion loan from Japan to the International Monetary Fund. More, most recently, as part of Japanese presidency for the G20 meetings, Mr. Asakawa has played a pivotal role for the success of the G20 Osaka summit. Some of his outstanding achievements in Osaka include the endorsement by the G20 leaders of the G20 principles of quality infrastructure investment, and the G20 shared understanding on the importance of universal health coverage financing in developing countries. These two, along with Mr. Asakawa's longstanding focus on domestic resource mobilization, will now be particularly helpful in the post-COVID-19 recovery in the Asia and Pacific region, as well as beyond. This symposium's focus on digitization has implications for all the three areas as well. Let me now request President Massa to deliver his opening keynote speech, please. President Massa, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ramesh. Uh, Your Excellency Minister Suri Muriani, uh, Minister Nadim Anwal uh, Makarim, uh, Vice Ministers and Senior Officials, representatives from the private sector, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everybody, and thank you uh, for joining us uh, for the Asian Development Bank's Southeast Asia Development Symposium. Uh, this is the very first of what will be an annual event uh, to provide government officials in Southeast Asia and other stakeholders with a wide range of cutting edge perspectives on critical development issues. The symposium complements ADB's ongoing work to support our developing member countries in making the transition to proper, prosperous, knowledge-based and sustainable economies. We convene at a time when the region is still grappling uh, with the coronavirus disease pandemic. The impact on human health and well being, livelihood, and economic activity have been truly painful. At the same time, the pandemic has accelerated digitalization, which is transforming the way we communicate, work, learn, and live. Accordingly, this year's symposium is focusing on how Southeast Asia can utilize digital technology to mitigate the impacts of the pandemic and lay the groundwork for long-term economic recovery. Today's event features a dynamic lineup of speakers and panelists from governments, the private sector, academia, and development organizations who will share their insights on this important topic. To provide context for this symposium, I, I would like to begin uh, by describing how ADB has responded uh, to the COVID-19 crisis by supporting the active use of digital technology. 
Then I will briefly present our five key policy areas that I do believe countries in Southeast Asia should strongly consider as they pave the way for a speedy recovery and prepare for a sustainable future built upon the increased and innovative uses of technology. When the uh, COVID-19 crisis hit, ADB responded quickly uh, with a $20 billion assistance package to support our developing members as they address the crisis and prepare for a new normal. Our package consists of three pillars, all of which incorporate digital technology in order to enhance effectiveness. Under the first pillar, ADB quickly provided grant support and technical assistance to our developing member countries to meet their immediate needs for purchasing critical medical equipment and supplies and to support the distribution of food and daily necessities to the most vulnerable populations. For example, when Metro Manila was locked down under strict quarantine restrictions in April this year, ADB in partnership with the government and private sector provided grant support to deliver food to 162,000 households. Our use of mobile technology facilitated prompt procurement and payment for supplies, which increased the efficiency of our operations. Under the second pillar of ADB's COVID-19 assistance, we are providing fast dispersing counter-cyclical funding to help our member governments implement emergency programs and prepare for recovery. In Southeast Asia, ADB provided $5 billion through our new financing modality called the COVID-19 Pandemic Response Option, or CIPRO, to support government's effort uh, to strengthen healthcare systems, increase social assistance to the poor and the vulnerable, and provide economic stimulus to businesses, including small and medium enterprises. As we provide this budget support, we have stressed the importance of digital solutions for mitigating the spread of the pandemic and ensuring the speedy and transparent disbursement of social assistance. For example, in Makassar, Indonesia, a project supported by ADB and the ASEAN Australia Smart Cities Trust Fund is enabling officials to utilize digital technology to map the spread of COVID-19 and to overlay this information with geo-located data on poverty, population density, access to basic services, and vicinity to transportation hubs. These tools are ensuring a more targeted distribution of protective equipment and other disease mitigation measures. And ADB's third pillar of assistance is providing substantial support to the private sector including about 1.7 billion to rejuvenate trade and supply chains, support enhanced microfinance and guarantees for liquidity stopped businesses and maintain employment. ADB's trade finance program and supply chain finance programs have developed a new inter interactive mapping tool that allows governments, banks, investors and healthcare professionals to pinpoint uh, which products are vital to healthcare and other fro uh, frontline workers. In these and many other uh, ADP operations, we are seeing the tremendous role uh, that digital technology can play in securing new solutions to the challenges facing communities and businesses during the pandemic and beyond. I will now discuss uh, uh, five key policy areas that developing economies in Southeast Asia should consider. These measures can help countries return to a path leading to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Once again, I firmly believe uh, that digital technology uh, will play an indispensable role. First, it is important that countries address regional disparities and ensure more equitable access to technology. For this, we must close the digital divide and expand existing investments in digital infrastructure by building more and higher quality mobile broadband infrastructure and ensuring affordable internet access and coverage. These steps can also enhance access to basic social services such as health and education and access to financial services. 
These investments will better equip countries to address the worsening income in inequality and disparities in opportunities brought about by the pandemic. At the same time, the governments, businesses, and individuals have to enhance cybersecurity to ensure that investments in digital infrastructure have their desired effect. A second policy issue is to facilitate green and resilient recovery. This will require promoting investments that drive economic activity towards low carbon and resilient practices. We can accelerate as these efforts by investing in digital technology. For example, intelligent transportation system can support a real-time traffic control and transport routing systems to manage congestion and reduce air pollution. Smart grid systems are also helping to secure a more efficient energy supply. As a third priority, countries should seize the opportunities that renewed globalization can offer in a post-pandemic new normal by strengthening regional cooperation and integration. Stronger cross-border digital connectivity, e-custom systems, and electron electronic cargo tracking systems can all make important contributions. Regional cooperation can also help build resilience against health security risks. ADB supports building a stronger regional disease surveillance system to contain the threat of future pandemics. Fourth, country needs, countries need to strengthen their institutional capacity for mobilizing domestic resources so that they are in a better position to finance public services while ensuring that sustainability. The introduction of revenue administration management information systems in many of ADB's developed member economies is leading to efficiency improvement in tax filing and processing, and an increase in tax yields. The use of satellite imagery and information systems is helping local governments monitor economic activity so that they can better assess property taxes. Last, to support all of the measures I described, countries should vigorously incubate, develop, and congregate small and medium enterprises with entrepreneurship and technology. To this end, it is imperative for countries to help aggregate a financial, academic, and business ecosystem that can create a cutting edge industrial base where SME congregate, just like Silicon Valley, Shenzhen, and Kyoto. Doing so will help set the stage for technology-based growth for the, of the future, and it will position Southeast Asia for a new digital age of prosperity. For our part, ADB established ADB Ventures in January this year. I believe ADB Venture will help technology startups in South, Southeast Asia scale up and deploy other technology solutions for the key policy areas that I mentioned earlier. To conclude, uh, let me emphasize my optimism that digital technology can serve as a linchpin in Southeast, Southeast Asia's recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us build on our existing efforts to make our mainstream digital technology use across sectors. I hope that today's discussion will offer a new and variable perspectives on addressing the immense challenges we face as we continue our work together towards a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable future for Southeast, Southeast Asia. So thank you again for joining us, and I wish all of you a good health.